Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the LA Wave Elite US Market Update. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Let's take a look at the charts and uh, get caught up to where we are in the markets. As you can see, we have the Wave 4 of the Wave 5 directional downtrending pattern up at the 82% corrective level, which as we know is uh, disqualified the downward zigzag pattern. So when something like this happens, periodically we'll uh, have a comment of, well, you know, Elliott Wave was showing that we were going to have a Wave 5 down and it didn't happen and so it's not accurate. Well, that's just not true. First of all, nothing's 100% accurate, but the markets are not static. The markets are dynamic. They're ever-changing. And one of the beauties of Elliott Wave is that it changes and adapts with the market. I think that's one of the great things about it, not that it's uh, detrimental in any way. And we did have this really nice zigzag pattern. You can go back and look at past recordings if you want to get caught up just arbitrarily drawing the lines here. But we had the zigzag pattern to the downside, uh, which was completed and was complex. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that the Wave 5 wasn't going to complete itself. So now where do we go? Well, that's another thing that's cool about Elliott Wave is when it adapts or uh, changes or relabels, uh, we look and see what's the next likely pattern to occur. Well, Elliott Wave rules state that if you have a failed Wave 5 pattern, then the entire impulse move gets retraced, meaning that zigzag that I just drew right here, this zigzag pattern, should get retraced, meaning the market itself should make its way back to the previous highs. And as you can see, we're not that far away from it, so it's no big stretch to say that's what's going to happen. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen. The market is at a uh, pretty decent level of resistance, as you can see right through here. It's been trying uh, around this level, right around 2800 uh, for the last several weeks. Uh, had a little bit of a downward move. A lot of people thought that was it. We tested and failed, and uh, we're going to have a big move down. But the market came right back up. And it's testing that level again. And obviously a break of 2800 would probably quickly move the market right up here to this uh, 2960 or so range. <clears throat> so that would be the expectation. So just how long do we uh, test this level? Do we uh, retrace a little bit beforehand? But in the not too distant future, we should be back up at those recent highs. And then that uh, pattern is satisfied. It would be a what failed, failed wave five down with a retracement of the prior impulse move. All the rules would be followed there, and then we would wait and see what the new chart setups are. And uh, that's, that's the way we trade. Looking at the SPY to bring volume in, uh, the volume is not nearly as good as it was on the downside. We've talked about that numerous times, but it's not horrible either. Uh, we can go back to the upward move towards the end of last year, and you can see that the volume down here in July, August, uh, uh, September, and October was, uh, was much less uh, on that upward move before the volatility started than it is now. So it's fairly decent volume, actually, uh, especially for an upward move. Uh, the VIX is quite interesting as well. We take a look at the uh, LA wave, and we have a series of uh, the uh, retracement uh, type patterns, the corrective moves, the ABCs, which could be uh, zigzags, flats, or uh, um, triangles. And right now, what we're looking at is a break of the 16 level, which held for a long time. Look at this area through here. You can see that uh, that was support resistance all the way uh, back from when the volatility started uh, in October of last year. But that's been broken, tested it, never had a uh, confirmation day. Remember how much we talk about this with breakouts of the triangles? You have to have a, on a break of a major moving average or a pattern, uh, support resistance, etc. cetera. A breakout day doesn't mean anything without a follow through day. Uh, the second day, the confirmation day, and, and the VIX didn't do it. So that breakout day that tried to occur on the 7th of March didn't happen, and now we're back down, and we're very close to this support level uh, around 12. The question is going to be, will that hold, uh, or will we break back all the way down into these areas towards the end of 2017, early 2018, where the VIX was trading down 
around nine, which was just unheard of as far as low volatility. So uh, we have this little bit of a trading range here between 12 and 16, and will be interesting to see if it comes down, hits 12 and bounces back up. Uh, maybe we get a little volatility first and that has the market to come down before it takes another run at breaking 2800 uh, significantly or uh, maybe uh, we actually break the 12 level on the way down with that significant move uh, back up to the 2800 region. The dollar has been fascinating. A lot of stuff going on with Brexit uh, and the euro has been reacting to uh, constant news over there about whether or not, you know, now there's questions on whether or not uh, Brexit's even going to happen uh, with uh, the defeat of uh, uh, Theresa's, Theresa May's uh, bill last week uh, or plan. So now we'll have to see what, what ends up happening and we can uh, look here and see that the dollar had rallied and now it's come back down. So it appears that um, we're just going to have to follow along with uh, uh, the news overseas as the dollar reacts to uh, the basic daily news. Uh, but something will happen, I think, at some point to where uh, they get things settled over there. And once that happens, the euro will likely uh, gain some strength, and that should push the dollar back down. That's further ammunition for the market to go to the upside. Remember, all markets are racing, all economies, all countries are racing to devalue their currency. Uh, because that's viewed as a good thing. That means you can take on more debt and it doesn't cost as much to service it. It's amazing uh, the way things uh, uh, are run uh, in this day and age. Looking at uh, TBT for interest rates, this is still fascinating. We have a wave four correction at 38%, which is a very strong Fibonacci level. I like that a lot. Uh, you can see that uh, we've got a flat here. So we have a complex wave four. Now the question is, are we going to move lower? Are we going to go down and hit that wave five low, meaning that interest rates go down? Uh, or are we going to run into another corrective pattern, another flat, uh, whatever uh, pattern before uh, it decides whether it's going to make that move? But clearly we're building resistance here, or excuse me, support down here around the 35 range. Um, so a break of that would be a quick move to the downside. Now remember, interest rates move, bonds move in inverse proportion. So when the price of a bond goes up, uh, the rates go down and vice versa. And the bond market typically reacts opposite to the equities market, meaning when equities are rallying, usually bonds are selling off and vice versa. Uh, but lately, with this move up in the market, the bonds have been kind of uh, moving to the upside as well as evidenced by how low rates have, have been. That's unusual. Uh, it means that at least so far, not a whole lot of money is coming out of the bond market and moving into the equities market. A lot of people feel that that's a big part of the reason why we've moved higher in this move up is because people don't really believe in it. Everybody was waiting for that downward move uh, for the test of the bottom, all those things that we had talked about and the things that didn't occur. All right, let's get to our uh, case studies. Uh, first of all, we had a great butterfly here. Uh, if you've been following along with these uh, case studies that we've showed, remember we've showed them ahead of time. These are not um, back-tested trades. These are uh, charts that we've shown you ahead of time. And we had a target right around 35 for our butterfly. We can uh, walk this uh, back a bit. And there you can see where our target was, right there at 35. And then I just showed you how we had gotten there. Uh, and so uh, that butterfly worked out incredibly well. Really, really nice gain uh, on that. If you get a directional butterfly for the uh, stock to move in between the wings, you can do very well. Uh, GLD uh, on gold, we did get, now remember we, you've, we're using this monthly chart and so it's trying to break out a uh, little bit of a, I wouldn't really call that a breakout because it's too close to the line. So uh, not a breakout day there and we're still testing the line. So not really, look, it looks like it wants to sneak out to the upside, but we can't confirm uh, an upward breakout yet because we don't have the uh, uh, follow through uh, or uh, follow through or uh, um, confirming 
second uh, month yet. It could happen, but this is a, remember this is a long term. We're expecting this to uh, happen over a long period of time uh, with the move in gold. And it's going to be significant, whatever it is, and then we'll look back because remember this is a monthly chart, so it'll be uh, for the next few years. But once we do get a confirmed breakout, you could have a very good uh, uh, long-term directional trading success uh, with GLD once it finally does move out. Uh, so we've um, moved to the upside. You can see it's gapping all over the place, which is quite interesting. Um, you, you, with these ETFs, uh, you tend to get some gaps uh, with overseas trading, etc. But this is really unusual to see. Almost every day, it seems like there's a gap, whether it's up or down, moving around. So there's uh, uh, a lot of volatility around gold right now, which is what we want when we're setting up and expecting a big breakout. Uh, another one of our butterflies that's doing extremely well is uh, AutoZone. We still have our target there at 980, which is the middle of uh, the butterfly. And a uh, big upward move day on, on Friday, gained over $12. So it, uh, uh, at this point, is looking like it uh, uh, could very well uh, hit that midpoint, uh, possibly next week, maybe the week after. But isn't it interesting? Look how many days we went sideways right there at the lower line of the target. And the Ellie Wave is fascinating, and the uh, the tools that uh, Profit Source and Integrated Investor have uh, in their Elliott Wave are so unique and so accurate. It's just amazing. Uh, those of you that are new that you may have used these products in the past, if you haven't renewed your uh, data feed, you you want to do that. Uh, we're, we're gaining. Uh, uh, followers every uh, week it seems like here so with a lot of you that are new um, take advantage of that it's this is an amazing tool go back and look at the past uh, re recordings over the past year and see how accurate the charts have been uh, another one MPWR which is also a butterfly <coughs> pardon me and on this one remember we were trading this one slightly different we were moving back to resistance with these corrective ABC patterns and the target price there, at least the midpoint of the butterfly, uh, is 150, which is just a move all the way back to uh, the previous wave five high. Because after you have a wave five and you have a corrective move, likely you can go back and test that level. So we'll see if that's what ends up happening here. Uh, but it's already made a very nice move towards our target. Also, a nice update on Friday. And then Starbucks uh, was. Still moving to the upside with this uh, wave five pattern, and we have uh, I have a butterfly just a little bit higher uh, than this up around uh, 74. So, but remember, out of the money butterflies are directional, so it doesn't the stock doesn't have to move within the wings of the butterfly to generate a profit in a put in a potential trade. It a directional move begins to. Uh, create profitability in the position, which is the great thing about trading butterflies out of the money and making them directional rather than the more sideways uh, strategy at the money butterflies that uh, most people tend to use. Uh, these have worked extremely well. So that gets everybody caught back up to date. Hope you've had a wonderful uh, past week or two, and we'll be back to talk to you again next week. Take care, everybody.